the technology restrictions this school has, it's kind of two parts. They limit what you can bring into school and they limit what you can do on the internet. So you're not allowed cell phones, you're not allowed laptops, tablets, anything electronic you're not allowed to bring bring in, you have to turn it in at the door. The policies have pretty much stayed the same as far as what's acceptable for staff and students to use the internet for. Um, one of the things that our technology department is vigilant about are those sites that students shouldn't be accessing um, or proxies that the students could use to get to these sites. We're not allowed to use our phones. If we get, if we have a phone, we have to turn it in once we get into school unless uh, unlike some people who sneak it in and if they sneak it in they have to give it to security and it's just <sighs> students are asked to turn their cell phones over we have um, envelopes and locations for uh, individual students cell phones and so they're not allowed to use them during the school day or within the school building I think I'd be more involved with class if I had like access to more technology during class because like then instead of like asking the teacher or interrupting the lesson, I could just look it up. I'm interested in being like an editor when I grow up and I could use the computer to learn how to do some small things for things in class, like even for this class. They have pretty advanced filtering software for what uh, websites you can visit and even in my own personal experience this has hindered me whenever I'm trying to research for an essay that I've been assigned in school because of what they've done to block it. Our content filter um, has a, uh, a predefined list of uh, sites that are allowed and aren't allowed. There's certain categories such as game websites, uh, shopping sites. If a site that should or should not be blocked is brought to our attention, um, we'll usually review it ourselves here in the technology department, uh, use our best judgment if it's a site that um, you know is blocked, but obviously it's you know something educational or um, something that you know is obviously appropriate. We'll usually just go ahead and unblock it. Um, occasionally, if it's something we're not sure about, we might run it past the principal first. Right now we are drawing our robots up on SolidWorks, that's a computer-aided drafting program. We look up things on the internet, um, there's different materials, different strengths of materials, and different products and stuff out there that we have to know where to get and how to research these materials. And certain sites that we want to look up, speed controllers and stuff, we have to try to get permission and we sit for a period sometimes waiting to get the permission. The cell phones, a lot of kids will want to take videos at home and bring them in to say, this is what I mean. Instead of enforcing the rules they had before, they decided to, they decided to just outlaw certain things like electronics. Our technology department has input, our teachers have input, um, superintendent, our school board members, uh, which would also open that up to the community when these things are uh, presented to the public and they're read at the school board meeting before they're officially voted on and adopted as policy. We have a, a sort of an open uh, policy here at the high school. Uh, the board sets a, a policy and we implement a procedure, so I, I want to be clear on that. Uh, we've been able to do some things creatively in our uh, building level procedures that allow uh, technology to be a little more open here. Um, so as you walk through the halls, you'll see students uh, with their cell phones out. Having iPads, like a walking computer with you, yeah. I would have never imagined that my freshman year. My freshman year, YouTube was blocked. Uh, many sites were blocked. We had computer labs in some rooms, not all. We had li very limited access to uh, information and technology. So having iPads and all these outlets for technology has really improved my education. We have access uh, in, in, in the building uh, through Wi-Fi and airports uh, that are stationed throughout the, the building. And um, the teachers control uh, the content filters. So we have a content filter, uh, but the teachers can override that. So if they wanted to show a YouTube video clip, um, 
they can go in and put in a username and a password. It allows them to have access to it. So we've really given the teachers control over that. Anything that ends in .com or .net or .edu works for us. It shouldn't be wide open. I think there should be parameters uh, with students exercising their rights responsibly, but really having access uh, as far as educationally whenever they want to or need to. At EF, they, they're more lenient with their policy. Like for instance, students could like, do research in class on their iPods or iPads and like they actually give out iPads to the students. Over the years, we've sort of, of built this trust with our teachers uh, and that translates to trust with the students. At one point, we were battling cell phone usage and now that we kind of permit students when they have a little bit of a free time to use their phones, that's really created a better environment and atmosphere here. We have a good policy. They keep a close eye on us though. I don't feel like they trust us totally, but they trust us enough. I like it. I mean, sometimes, yeah, it can be a little strict with the sites that they block, but I mean, everybody needs restrictions, especially if you're in high school. I mean, we're kids, we're going to do stupid stuff. Um, the, the school board uh, meetings, we have, a, um, we have representatives from our student government association that attend as representatives, um, and they take sort of issues and things that are happening at the building level, and they take that to district administration. Um, so it's a real nice way to keep communication open between the students and the upper levels of administration and the school board. A part of each agenda is how our technology policy is working. We give them advice uh, how to improve upon it. They don't always take the advice, but they're very happy to hear what is going on. We recently hosted up the Pennsylvania Student Leadership Consortium and we talked to schools like South Fayette, Peters Township, Mount Lebanon, some of the most prestigious schools in our area and they don't have as much access as we do. So right now that instills pride in my school that we have such access and opportunity to learn. I would say, say number one, be patient, um, and it's a process, and I think this documentary is the first step for you in that. Uh, I would say um, make sure that you communicate uh, your, your needs and your wants and your vision for this to the administration. I think it's also important that the students step up and say, look, these are some ways that we could use these devices. Here are some appropriate actions that we can take. Here's how we can be responsible. Here's how we're going to hold ourselves responsible. Um, and, you know, these responsible technophiles like to refer to them, it'd be nice if we could take what they're doing and what they're doing well and spreading it to everybody else. You know, instead of focusing on we have to be restrictive, we have to be draconian and these kind of policies that we have. It can't just be, you know, I want to go on Facebook, I want to go on Twitter, I want to do this. It can't just be about that. It has to be about learning how to be responsible. And Recently, I and some of uh, our teachers had a chance to sit down at the table with, with some students here from the school and talk about um, ways that we could better serve them. You know, certainly it's limiting problems and it's preventing those kind of bullying kind of behaviors which is a, you know, a major concern for us. But at the same time it's also taking this piece of technology out of the kids hands here at Clareton where other schools around us they're putting technology into their hands. And that doesn't sit well with me and I'm trying to rectify those two things. What I struggle with is um, what implications it means for the kids for the future. Students can go to board meetings, talk to a teacher or principal, go to even just s smaller meetings with just teachers to just talk to them about it and be responsible or we can even show them this film. And this could make a huge impact and it's already starting to make an impact on you know the teachers and the principals in the IT uh, department. Me being a freshman now, by the time I'm a senior, I really hope and think we could actually evolve, so to speak, enough to actually be able to pull our phones out in class and it not be a problem. It's not just pencil paper, things that could be back in like 1990 something. It's, it's new. It's someone, it, there are many people just sharing what they know and could possibly be passed down to us. and help us create more things that will make, a, like I said again, a brighter future for everyone.